I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. We are looking at Luke chapter 10. Tonight is a night of power. The night of great wonders. The night of great miracles. And the night of great manifestation in your life. You will never be the same again. Give me an number of state amen over there. If you will do what he says, because you know when they eat up wine, the mother of Jesus told him they do not have any wine, and then he she told the servants, Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. Whatsoever he says to you, do it. The word is coming to you. When you accept the word, wonders will follow. When you accept the word, miracles will follow. And the power of God will follow your life. Tonight is your night. I thought somebody will say amen. In Luke chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 1. After this things, the Lord appointed all the seventy also. And he sent them two by two before his face. In every city and place with himself will come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, for the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. He called toil, he sent them out with power, anointing, and authority. Everywhere those twelve went, the sick was healed, the lost was saved, was saved, and there was survival everywhere. After all that, now he sent out the seventy, and he sent them out two by two, and then he told them they should go and have their souls into the kingdom. Those 70 people went. Everywhere they went. Every city they went. Every location they went. There was power manifestation everywhere. Look at when they came back. In verse 17. And the 70 returned. The 70 returned again with joy. Saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. All the originators of your problem will fall down. All those evil powers, evil spirits against your life, they are falling tonight. They came and they said, Even the devils are subject unto us of thy name. When God sends out an ambassador, he parts up that ambassador with anointing and power, with a gift and miracle. With unction and anointing, and he has sent me to you today to tell you everything you need is in Christ. Everything you need, you find in salvation that Christ gives, you find in the healing that Jesus gives. 
you find in the deliverance that Jesus gives. He sent them out. They came back home with joy. And they said, the devils are subject unto us. All those problems are under the authority of the name of Jesus. And then he said, I even beheld Satan. And he fell down from heaven. Then he said in verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power to try the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. He has given out power tonight. That power will cancel your problem. Will destroy the works of the devil in your life. The power of Christ tonight will set you free. Will change your destiny tonight. Somebody there tonight, your destiny is going to be changed. Somebody there tonight, your soul is going to be saved. Somebody there tonight, you rise up out of that wheelchair. Somebody there tonight, your blind eyes will open. I give unto you power over all the power of the enemy. Every power that chased you here will be chased away from your life. All the things that trouble you, all the things that torment you, all the things that harass your life, tonight is the end of that problem. Then he says in verse 20, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. There is something extra coming your way. Your name will be written in the book of life. And God will say, that's my charge. The angels will rejoice with you because you are now a candidate for heaven. What is the person I'm talking to there? A candidate for heaven. You leave all your sins behind. You come to the Savior. And Jesus accepts you. And you accept Jesus. He will be your Lord and Savior. Tonight, the Lord will empower you. I said the Lord will empower you tonight. Power in your spirit. Power in your soul. Power in your body. Everywhere around you, the power of the Almighty will arrest every situation there. I want to talk to you tonight on empowerment for supernatural conquest. Empowerment for spiritual supernatural conquest. Jesus is a mighty conqueror. If you come in partnership with the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be a conqueror yourself. Jesus is a mighty conqueror. You give your life to Christ, everything that defeated you before, you become victorious, triumphant, and conquerors. He will break every yoke in your life and destroy the works of the devil. He will make you to stand firm as a conqueror, as a victor. And today it's going to happen to you. All the problems you see right now, you will see them no more forever. Empowerment for supernatural conquest. I'm going to talk on three things before we pray. Number one, the privilege and the power for sonship. When you were born into this world, you became a child of your father and your mother. 
and you became a, a child or a son or a daughter of a human being. The child of a man will have the power and the privilege of a man. The offspring of the lion will have the privilege and the power of the lion. The offspring of a goat will have the power and the privilege of a goat. The cheek that came out of a hen cannot go beyond that hen. That's the parent. That's the mother. And because of that, that cheek can only have the power of chicken. If you're looking for power in your life, you will never get power beyond human power. Natural power. Ordinary power. Your power will only be as high as the people that brought you into the world. When you become a son of God, when you become a daughter of God, when you become the offspring of God, when you become connected with the Almighty God, sonship, sonship, and you have that privilege and the power of the Almighty God Himself. That's the power God gave man originally. When he said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Today, you are crossing over. Somebody there said, I said, you are crossing over. From the human to the supernatural. From the ordinary to the extraordinary. From weakness unto strength. The privilege and the power of sonship. You become a son of God. Everything will turn around in your life. Point number two. The promise of power over sickness. There is no sickness in Christ. There is no sickness in God. There is no suffering in Christ. There is no suffering in God. When I come and bring you connected with this Christ, connected with the power, connected with anointing, power over sickness, instantaneously tonight, that cancer will vanish away. Instantaneously tonight, the thing you have been carrying about, I am sick here, I am sick there, Something is coming your way. Somebody there says something is coming your way. The promise of power over sickness. Disease will become something of the past. Sickness will become something of the past. Pain will become something of the past. Miraculous healing. Miraculous deliverance. Miraculous freedom. This is the day of your freedom. Evil spirits will bow. Sicknesses will bow. That infirmity will bow. Incurable diseases are taken away tonight. Am I talking to somebody right there? Expecting a miracle. Going to get a miracle. Is coming your way. You receive in Jesus' name. Number three, the price of power for the supernatural. The price of power for the supernatural. Who set me the price? Something you have to do. Simple steps you have to take. The Lord will give you a challenge. The Lord will give you a command. And he'll say, this step, this step, and this step. And the moment you take that step, you will walk into the supernatural. 
you will walk into the impossibilities of your life becoming possible. Number one, I'm talking about the privilege and power for sonship. The privilege and the power for sonship. You know what Jesus said? He said, everyone that was born into this world, he said, you have your father, the devil. He said, he was a liar from the beginning. A murderer from the beginning. A criminal from the beginning. An evil personality from the beginning. And the works of your father, you do. And so, everybody that is born into this world, the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And because you have sinned, if you have sinned, you become a child of the devil. Let me read it to you. If you have your Bible, you want to mark this in your Bible. I'm looking at John chapter 8, verse 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. It says, Ye of your father, the devil. Did you know that? Did you know that? That a sinner has the devil as a father. Did you know that? That that violent man, the father is the devil. Did you know that? That the one that is violent, that's of the devil. He was talking to those hypocritical Pharisees. Hypocritical religious people. The people that covered up with religion. He said you have your father the devil. And now we're going to cross over. You come out of that attitude of the devil, you come to the side of the almighty God. A change will happen to you. I'm talking to somebody there. I said a change will happen to you. That thing that attaches you to the devil, that chain will be caught tonight. That thing that associates you with Satan, that chain will be caught tonight. And that evil association in that secret court, you are coming out tonight. You have been in the dungeon. You have been in the valley. You have been in defilement. You have been in evil. You have been in violence and fighting. Although you are religious, but you know that you are committing sin every day. Let me read to you First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 8. It says, He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. The sinner is a child of Satan. The sinner is an offspring of Satan. The sinner has the characteristics of Satan. When you do that evil thing, there's no sin in Christ. If you're a sinner, you are not in Christ. There's no evil in Christ. If you're doing evil, you are not in Christ. There's no wickedness in Christ. If you're wicked, you are not in Christ. And there's no cultism in Christ. If you are cultic, you are not in Christ. There's no hatred in Christ. If there is anger, hatred, animosity, you are not in Christ. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. But thank God that's not the end of that verse. It says, For the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. All that work of the devil in your life tonight are destroyed. And number says, wants to say, Amen. What are you going to do? 
How do you come out of that? How do you cross over to the side of the Lord and become a child of God? No more a child of the devil. How do you do that? Somebody said, I will go for water baptism. Mm-mm, that one doesn't go. That one doesn't do it. Somebody says, I go for confirmation. My friend, that one doesn't set you free from sin. Somebody says, I go to Jerusalem on pilgrimage. My friend, that doesn't do it. Somebody says, I go for the image of Mary and bow down. My friend, that one doesn't save you. How do you cross over her? Out of being a child of the devil, and then you become a child of God. And you can have the testimony in your heart. He forgave my sin. He changed my life. He transformed my life. The spirit of God bearing witness in my heart. I am now a child of God. I will read it to you in the Bible. In Jeremiah chapter 51. Jeremiah chapter 51. It tells us what to do. So that you will cross over. Is there somebody there wanting to cross over tonight? I said, is there somebody there wanting to cross over tonight? All right. God bless you. Look at this. Look at this. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 45. My people go out of the midst of her. And deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. Go out of the midst of her. What does that mean? If you're a sinner, you're in the midst of other sinners. It says go out of the midst of her. If you're a drunkard, you're in the midst of other drunkards. It says go out of the midst of her. If you're an adulterer, you're in the midst of other adulterers. It says go out of the midst of her. If you're an idol worshiper, you're in the midst of other people worshiping idol. And it says go out of the midst of her. Come out of your sin and declare for Jesus Christ the Savior. And say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I cannot save myself. I come out of my sin. I receive Jesus as my Savior. Second Corinthians, I'm reading from chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6. I'm reading here from verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them and be separate. Come out from among them and be separate. Says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. You see what God Himself is saying? He wants you to become a child of God. He wants you to become a saved soul. He wants your sin to be forgiven. He says, look at your life. Don't play religion. He says, look at your life. Don't play hypocrisy there. He says, look at your life. Don't justify yourself. The Lord already knows where you are. He knows your name. He knows your house address. He knows your life. He knows your character. He knows all that see you're hiding. And he says, be sincere. Come out. Come out. Come out. And leave all your sins behind. And say, Lord Jesus, you are the only one that can save me. The only one that can change my life. And tonight, you will become a child of God. Somebody there said you will become a child of God. Somebody there said you'll become a child of God. Revelation chapter 18. So that you'll notice what the Bible says, not me. 
Revelation chapter 18. I'm reading here from verse 4. It says in verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven. Another voice from heaven. Another voice from heaven. What does it say? It says, My people come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. That ye be not partakers of her sins. That ye receive not of her plagues. The Lord is calling you. Jesus is the light of the world. Come out of darkness, come to the light. Jesus is the Savior of the world. Come out of your sin and come to the Savior. Jesus is the appointed Messiah. The Christ is the high priest of our salvation. And he says, you come out of evil with, with all your mind, in all sincerity. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. What then will happen? You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and then you become a child of God. Angels will see you as child of God. The Almighty Father will see you as a child of God. Jesus will see you as a child of God. And then he has a place for the children of God in heaven. In John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him. As many as received him. To them he gave power to become the sons of God. As many as come out of their sea. And they come to the Savior. As many as come out of darkness. And they come to the light. As many as come out of the wickedness. And they come to the forgiveness of the Lord. As many as receive him. He gave them the power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. The power for sonship. Is going to happen to somebody today. Who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Out of sin and to the salvation of the Lord. Something will follow. Number two. Everybody say number two. It's coming your way. Are you there? I said it's coming your way. The promise of power over sickness. The promise of power. The promise of authority, the promise of dominion, the promise of victory, the promise of power over sickness. Sicknesses are vanishing away today. I say sicknesses are going away today. There is a promise the Lord has made. And when God makes a promise, he fulfills the promise. When God says, come, I'll do this, he always does it in faithfulness. But we must look at the condition he has given. We must look at the promise he has made. In Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading here from verse 26. Exodus chapter 15. Reading from verse 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. First of all, he must be your God. First of all, he must be your Savior. First of all, he must be your Redeemer. First of all, he must be your Father. And if he shall diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. I will do that which is right in his sight. I will give ear unto his commandments and keep all his commandments, his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. 
Can you do you notice something there? He said, if you do this, I will do this. If you pay attention, if you pay attention, if you give a listening ear, and if you observe what he says, when he says come out of sin, you come out of sin. When he says don't touch that unclean sin anymore, Lord forgive me, I will not touch the unclean sin anymore. When he says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he say yes Lord I believe. When he says you cannot join darkness and light, you cannot remain in darkness and then you say you want the benefits of the light. Come out of darkness. It says if you will diligently hack into the voice of the Lord your God. Come out of the shrine. Come out of the idol worship. Come out of that wickedness. Come out of that carnality. Come out of that smoking. Come out of that drunkenness. If you will diligently listen to the word of the Lord. I say yes Lord I accept. Yes Lord I believe. Yes Lord I will do that. Then he says I will not put any of the diseases of Egypt upon you. And he says I am the Lord that healeth thee. Somebody is getting healed tonight. I said somebody is getting healed tonight. He says believe. You believe the Lord. He will heal me. He will take my sickness away. He will take my infirmity away. He will change my life. He will change my destiny. And as you believe that tonight, as you accept that tonight, a miracle will happen to you. I said a miracle will happen to you. And number say, give me a good, good amen. In, in Matthew chapter 8, Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. It says, when the evening was come, evening of wonders, when the evening was come, evening of miracles, when the evening was come, evening of healing, when the evening was come, evening of jubilee, when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word. And he healed all that were sick. How many did he heal? How many did he heal? How many is he going to heal today? Who is going to be healed today? Bright eyes to open. Who are you? Where are you? Jumping out of the wheelchair. Where are you? Great things happen to you. Where are you? It's coming your way. I said it's coming your way. It is your evening. It is your time. Nobody will take this away from you. It is your privilege. And it is the power that comes to you. There is a miracle with your neighbor reaching on it. Jesus is passing by. And Jesus is looking for you. What is the miracle catcher? What is the miracle carrier? What is the one that is going to catch the miracle carry go tonight? You will, you will get it. When the evening was come, they brought unto him the people that were lame, the people that were blind, the people that had evil spirit. He spoke one word and those evil spirits were cast out. Miracles happened. And Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever is going to happen there. I said it's going to happen there. The 17 that it may be fulfilled. Which was spoken by Zaz the prophet. Saying himself took our infirmities and carried and bare our sicknesses. But remember, whatsoever it says unto you, do it. He healed a particular man in John chapter 5. 
after that healing, he came to that man. And he said in verse 14, at what Jesus findeth him in the temple. After the man was healed, he didn't go back to the shrine. After the man was healed, he didn't go back to the pool of water. After the man was healed, he didn't go to Habalis anymore. After the man was healed, he didn't run, he didn't run to the dancing club, night club. When he was healed, he went to the temple. And the Lord is going to touch you tonight. I said the Lord is going to touch you tonight. You will not go back to the places where they commit your sin. You will follow Jesus Christ. I will follow Jesus Christ. I will follow Jesus Christ. I will not go to those idolatrous places anymore. Am I talking to somebody there? Where are you? I will not go back. Tell, tell the Lord, I will not go back. Shout it out, I will not go back. Let the angels hear, I will not go back. Afterward, he found him in the temple. And then he said something to him. When he found him in the temple, he says, Behold, thou art made whole. See no more, lest a worse thing happen unto thee. The healing you have tonight, you are going to keep that healing. The miracle you have tonight, you are going to keep that miracle. The deliverance you have tonight, you are going to keep the deliverance. But sin no more. Sin no more. Sin no more. He doesn't want you to go back to drunkenness. He doesn't want you to go back to idolatry. He doesn't want you to go back to the nightclub. He doesn't want you to go back to that fornication. He doesn't want you to go back to that adultery. He says, see no more. The people that go back to sin. He says, the worst thing will happen unto them. See no more, lest the worst thing happen unto you. The Lord is here tonight. He will heal your body. He will break every yoke in your life. I want an number state. Amen. He will forgive your sin. He will set you free from sin. He will cleanse your sin. He will turn your life around. And he will heal all your sicknesses. I said he will heal all your sicknesses. He will conquer every foe and every enemy. He will destroy every work of the devil. He will solve every problem. He will set every captive free. There is power here tonight. Present power. Prevailing power. Triumphant power. The power that will roll your problems away. But he says you come out of sin. And you come to the healer. You come to the redeemer. When you do what he has told you to do. A miracle will follow. Number one. The privilege and power for sonship. Number two, the promise of power over sickness. Number three, the promise and the, the price of power for the supernatural. The price of power for the supernatural. To draw the supernatural power of God from heaven. There's something God has said we ought to do. He has power to solve every problem. He has power to set you free tonight. Because with God, all things are possible. Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 26. Matthew chapter 19. 
I'm reading from verse 26. It says, uh, look at this. It says, but Jesus beheld them and he said unto them. Jesus beheld them and said unto them. With men, this is impossible. Look at your situation. With men, this is impossible. Look at that calamity there. With men, this is impossible. Look at that habitual sin. We've been trying and trying and trying to break that habitual sin. You cannot break that power of sin by yourself. With men, this is impossible. Look at that incredible disease. You tried everything you could try. But that disease is still there. With men, this is impossible. And then Jesus said, but with God, all things are possible. But with God, all things are possible. Tonight, that possibility has come. Tonight, that miracle is coming. In Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 37. Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 37. Because of the power from, on, from heaven. Supernatural. Extraordinary. Miraculous. And tonight is that night. And it says in Luke chapter 1 verse 37. For with God nothing shall be impossible. With God nothing shall be impossible. What do you do? What do you do? How do you connect with the supernatural power of God? What do you do tonight? That the power of God will flow into your life. Number one, repent and believe. Repent and believe. The word repent is similar to the word return. You have been going in a particular direction, a wrong direction. And then the Lord is saying return. Return from the way of evil. Return from the way of sinning. Return from the habit of wickedness. Return from that lifestyle of deception. Return. You repent and believe. Number two, you receive and become. You receive Jesus and become a child of God. He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy lady, and I will give you rest. You repent, that means return. You come out, come out of sin, come to the Savior. You believe on the Lord Jesus, you believe on Him as your Savior. You return and believe. You receive and you become. You receive Jesus and become a child of God. You become saved. You become healed. You become delivered. You become blessed. Number one, you repent and you believe. Number two, you receive and you become. Number three, you renew and belong. You renew your commitment. You renew your consecration. I belong to the family of God. It is not the people are running after you. Come to church, come to church. You say, I belong. It's not the people are saying, won't you come? Eh, I don't have chance. Eh, I, but you said you gave your life to the Lord. Eh, that was on the field at the crusade. But now you know eh, I, there are many, a lot of uh, challenges. You, you renew your commitment to the Lord and you belong to the family of God. Supernatural things will happen to you. I said miracles will happen to you. The power of God will touch your life. Number one, repent. Number two, receive. 
Number three, renew. Number one, believe. Number two, become. Number three, belong. I belong to Christ. I belong to Jesus. He is my Savior. He is my Redeemer. I've accepted Him. I will go with Him. I will never leave Him. I will never forsake Him. I belong to the family of God. Supernatural power will begin to flow into your life. Healing will be beginning to flow into your life. Deliverance will begin to flow into your life. It's going to happen right now. I said it's going to happen right now. What is it going to happen? I said, what is it going to happen? When will it happen? The key is in your hand. The key is your hand. The prize of power for the supernatural. And you say, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. And I will never go back anymore. Lord, I come. I will never go back anymore. I repent. I return. I come to the Lord. I leave all my sins in reality. And I come to Jesus to be my Savior. Will you do that? I said, will you do that? And I'm first to answer, will you do that? Amen. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. Something good is coming your way. It's bowed and eyes closed. If you want now to take this step, you're not going to be a child of Satan anymore. You're not going to be a product of darkness anymore. You're not going to remain in your dungeon anymore. You say, Lord Jesus, I believe you tonight. Lord Jesus, I give my heart to you tonight. Lord Jesus, I repent tonight. You will raise up your hand wherever you are. Lord, I am here. I am not for Satan. I am for Jesus. I am not for drunkenness. I am for Jesus. I am not for adultery. I am for Jesus. I am not for drunkenness. I am for Jesus. I am not for shine. I am for Jesus. I am not for idol worship. I am for Jesus. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. If you are raising up your hand, you will stand up. You will say, I declare for Jesus. Tonight is my Savior. I declare for Jesus. Tonight is my Redeemer. I declare for Jesus. I'm going to be a child of God. I'm going to be a child of God. I'm coming out of darkness. I'm coming out of evil. I'm coming out of wickedness. You raise up your hands over there on top there, over here in front of me, over there on that side. You raise up your hand, you stand up. If you're standing up because you belong to Jesus, if you're standing up because you're repenting of your sin, if you're standing up because you come out of darkness, you come to the light. You take a step of faith and say, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Take whatever you have there. Come right to the front here. Come right to the front here. I'm coming to Jesus. 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 Come here now. Come to Jesus now. Out of darkness. Out of drunkenness. Out of adultery. Out of fornication. Out of wickedness. Out of fighting. Out of gang. Out of occultism. Out of paths of darkness. Out of secret society. Out of evil. Lord, I come. 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 And break the chain behind you. And burn the bridges behind you. I will not go back into that adultery again. I will not go back to that fornication again. I will not go back to idol worship again. I will not go back to drunkenness again. I will not go back to fighting again. I will not go back to violence anymore. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. I will be a child of God. Lord, I come. I will be a child of God. Lord, I come. I repent and I believe. I repent and I believe. Lord, I come. 
the Lord is waiting for you. Don't stay with Satan. Don't stay with the wicked one. He will destroy your life. He will drag you to hell fire. But to say, Lord, I come out. Up there, I come. Up there, I come. Up there, I come. Down below, there, I come. You are hearing my voice on the side of the road. Come. Come. Come out of darkness. Come out of wickedness. Come out of your sin. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. As you come, close your eyes. As you come, begin to pray. As you come, declare to the Lord. Now I believe. Now I believe. Now I believe. Jesus died for me. To take my sins away. And to forgive me. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. He wants you to open your mouth. And tell him. I want to be forgiven. I want my life to change. I want to be a new creature. I want eternal life. I want eternal life. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. He will hear your voice. He will hear your voice. He will hear your voice. voice. Tell him I come out. I come out. I come out of that evil sin. I come out of that sin. I will not go back there. I will not go back there. My life is different from tonight. My life is new from tonight. I believe Jesus is now my Savior. I believe Jesus is now my Lord. And Jesus is my Master. From tonight, what he says I will do. I will follow the Lord. I will follow the Lord. I repent and believe. I repent and believe. I receive and be I receive and belong. I receive and belong. I receive and I become. I become a child of God. And I renew my commitment to the Lord. I will follow Jesus. I decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me. And the cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. All those evil things, they are gone. I'm on my way to heaven. No turning back. No turning back. Promise the Lord. Promise the Lord. You repent and believe. You receive and you become a child of God. You renew your commitment and belong to the family of God. Have you done that? Answer me. Have you done that? I said, have you done that? Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this glorious moment. Many are called. Few are chosen. The people who truly believe are chosen. The people who turn away from their sin, they are chosen. As I've called these people, and they turn away from their sin, choose them in Jesus' name. Forgive their sins. Change their lives. Bring new life to them. Eternal life to them. And let the power of sonship come to them in Jesus' name. Let your spirit be a witness in their hearts. They are not children of God. And give them the grace to go and sin no more. The grace to remain in the kingdom of God. To belong to the family of God. And not to go back to their sins anymore. Bear witness in their hearts that you are forgiving them. Bear witness in their hearts that you have saved them. That their names are reaching the book of life in heaven. Thank you Lord because I know you have answered. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Hold on. Our counselors are there. And they will ask you for some details. Or they might just give you the paper to fill the paper correctly. We well, doing that so we can help you more. I repent and I believe. I repent and I believe. I receive and I become. I renew and I belong. Do it properly. 
And then after we finish this now, the miracle prayer will come to you. Your miracle is about to come to you. You will receive. Somebody there said you will receive. Our state of Asia will take over now and help us, Pastor Ima Obodo. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I can't hear our people. I said, Praise the Lord. The miracle time has come. The miracle power of God is coming upon your life. Are you ready for the miracle? Where are you there? You need healing. You need deliverance. You need a miracle. You need the power of God to touch you. And to roll away the problem. It's coming your way. You raise up one hand. You lay the other hand where you have the problem. And then we're going to pray. Where you hear the final amen. That miracle will be there in your body. Final amen, it is done. Give me a good amen. And then after that, you check up yourself. You'll see what God has done. Raise up your hand. Get ready, it's coming your way. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and glorify you. We magnify your holy name. We know you cannot fail. You will not fail your people tonight. I come on behalf of your people. I send forth your power to everyone right now in Jesus' name. Set your people free. Destroy the works of the devil. Break every yoke in their lives. Do wonders in the midst of your people today. Lord, I pray anyone that is having mental problem there, insanity there, madness there, epilepsy there, I command that spirit to come out in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have any swelling in their body, swelling on the chest, swelling in the legs, swelling of a near, swelling and tumor, fibroid, hunchback. Whatever, I command that swelling come out in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have any delicate disease, terminal disease, life threatening disease. I command that cancer be healed in Jesus' name. I command that also be healed in Jesus' name. That hypertension, I command, be healed in Jesus' name. You are listening to our pastor, Pastor W. F. Kumoye, or other anointed minister of God from our ministry. Let the words sink in your heart and they will do you good throughout your whole life. It is our belief by the grace of the Lord that you will come and worship with us at Deeper Life Bible Church, but number 4656 Bravo Drive. We have our service every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 11.30. And we have our Bible study on every Monday from 7 to 8.30. As you are doing so, I, the grace of the Lord will continue to be with you and you will never be the same. Thank you. God bless you.